Hi guys, it's March 29th, 2015, and I am um, finishing up my last six miles into Fontana. Um, going to spend the night at Fontana Lodge. I think the official name is Fontana Village Resort, maybe, but everyone calls it Fontana Lodge in Fontana Village, so this is six more miles to go. Today is a slack packing day, so it's been um, easier in terms of having no wake. It's been going a little faster, or at least I've been going slightly faster, although I'm still relatively slow. And it's been a good day to slack pack because Jacob's Ladder, which was the first thing that we did today out of Sequoia Gap, was rough. It was very rough. It was um just straight up and I had to stop a couple times and like let my legs kind of chill out um, for a little bit because they were getting really sore so I was just taking my time and trying to acclimate them to uh, the steep climb. And we've been amazed because even though we're slack packing, all day we've been being passed by people who are carrying full weight. Like it's very variable the pace people are taking along the trail. Some people are just cruising with, you know, big looking packs, probably 20 or 30 pound um, packs. And here we are, going really slow. I just stopped that intersection back there and my knee started hurting and there's a lot of mud and I fell earlier today in the mud twice and I think at one point I did something to my knee so it's hurting so I'm glad that I'm taking the zero tomorrow because I need to recuperate and if there's anything that's going to that I worry about as a cause of me getting off the trail most of all, it's injuries, just because, you know, you push yourself too hard. And I really want to push myself, but I don't want to hurt myself. So, I'm trying to not to make that mistake. The zero will feel good. Now that I'm walking on it, it doesn't feel so bad, but when I stopped, it was quite sore. And all my friends are pretty battered up. One of them bruised a rib yesterday. And one of them has like some kind of groin problem, like muscle in his groin is hurting. And also he, uh, his knees are hurting, so he doesn't want to risk, you know, not resting and then... Anyway, it's supposed to rain tomorrow, so if we don't hike, I won't mind not climbing uphill in the rain. Tuesday's supposed to be nice, so it'll be a better time to hike, I think. Um, but, yeah, Monday doesn't look so good. Let's see. And, yeah, all four of the people who I was staying with last night, well, I guess minus me, but now I'm hurt, um, had injuries. Like, as I said, groin injury, bruised rib, and the other girl who was with us had a knee problem, was having bad knee pain, so, I mean, hiking like this really batters you up unless you're careful, and I think that some people need to remember that it's not a sprint, it's a marathon, so if you're hurting, before it gets really bad, take some time off. Just to recuperate instead of rushing. You don't have to do 20 miles a day out of the gate. Most people probably can't handle it on this kind of terrain. Like, I know I can't. And so, you know, don't push yourself to the point where you're going to be injuring yourself. And even. Though we've been trying to take it slow, it's still like relatively 
hard to avoid pain when you're hiking like this every day, I guess. Uh, you know, like, I come from a relatively sedentary lifestyle, I guess. Like, I, I ran, but that was not as intense as this. That was like an hour a day in a very flat area on paved roads, and it's just really different. And not carrying any weight, obviously. And so, I've had problems with chin splints and stuff, but this is just a whole different animal in terms of, like, the likelihood that you'll get blisters when you're going uphill and downhill and like chin splints and other kinds of pain. It just seems like it's more likely. So that's something that you have to be thinking about. Is the fact that, you know, injury is something that's very common and there are ways you can kind of head it off and people really are in a rush when they start, but you don't need to be. Especially if you're starting like this early, as, as I did, like, it's not a huge rush unless you have budgetary considerations, I guess, to think about, but I don't know, I think, I guess I go really slow, so maybe I'm biased, but I think that part of the reason that I haven't gotten seriously or more seriously injured so that I'm constantly in pain because I haven't yet which is really fortunate and like honestly kind of surprising to me because I was that's what my number one fear was but the reason I don't is because I go really slow and I try to make sure that I um, step correctly before I take a step on these rock rocky sections which are a big very worrying thing and then you know always trying to look down and make sure that I'm not um, going to step wrong and taking my time on downhills because that's what kills me. Uphills, well if it's as steep as Jacob's ladder was this morning, it kills me too, to be honest. Like my calves, calves are, like my calf muscles are really in pain and hurting at that point if it's like straight up like that was, but um, so this kind of uphill is pretty nice. I prefer this to downhill and I can go faster on it than I can on downhill because yeah, I'm not as ungainly going up as I am coming down. I'm so ungainly. I'm just not very coordinated. So at least I haven't broken a trekking pole yet. That's a good thing. But, that's about the most I can say for my coordination. So. And I haven't been injured. I feel pretty good, despite having some, like, some pains. It's inevitable that you have pains, but, yeah. Unless you're, like, really in shape before you come. But for me, it just wasn't possible. There was no way I could have been. I just, Nebraska doesn't have a lot of mountains and I've never been um, in, like, done a lot of hiking at elevation or in high elevation areas before. I just don't have access to that and I didn't. So it's something new and it's challenging. It's more challenging. The terrain is more challenging than I thought it would be. I, I knew it wouldn't be easy, but it's pretty, it's pretty hard sometimes. I know this isn't the hardest section of trail, and I'm not claiming that, but climbing out of NOC was really a big challenge, so it feels good that I have been navigating it pretty well, even though I'm slow, and haven't been hurting myself, um, and I know that it supposedly gets slightly easier towards Northern Virginia, like north of Damascus, and the Shenandoahs give you a lot of opportunities to um, take breaks and stuff, and so that's going to be a nice change, and a welcome change, even though, I mean, the mountains here are beautiful, but I'm not a huge fan of, like, the section
sections of trail where you're walking on the edge. Like yesterday, there were some sections where I was right on the edge, there's a steep drop off, and then uh, it's just a very narrow trail. And then there's blowdowns that the Georgia, no, the North Carolina ATC hasn't taken off. They're still here. And it just makes it hard when it's slick like it was yesterday and there's blowdowns. So, like, you can see the scratches where people have slipped while trying to get their trekking poles, like, hold them up. It's intimidating, but, yeah, it hasn't been so bad today. Besides the first climb, and it's very rewarding to be able to walk over terrain like we've been walking on, because you can see where you get to. When you're at the top, you're like, wow, I came all the way from down there, and I've been doing switchbacks the whole way. <laughs> so, that's quite a ways. It's amazing. The only thing I will say about having these steep uphills and downhills, the worst thing about going down on these steep switchback sections is when you can hear the cars long before you can see uh, down there and you know, you just know from looking that you're a really long way from the bottom and even longer when you consider that the trail has switched back to make it more graded but you know that you're close enough, you're like within a mile or two, you're close enough to hear it. It's so agitating, like, it's nice because you know the day's almost done in a way, but in a way it's more aggravating than if you couldn't hear the traffic noise because it just, you look down. Like yesterday when I was coming into Sokoa, I could see everyone sitting at a picnic table while I was still way up there and I could hear the traffic noise and I realized I still had probably a mile and a half to go. How am I ever going to finish this? So, yeah, it's a little bit uh, annoying sometimes, but it's okay. Mostly it's been switched back from the steep section, so, I mean, you don't have to worry too much about going straight up. There's just a few sections where the switchbacks aren't as prevalent, and then it is really steep. The NFC is the hardest terrain, in my opinion, that we've done so far but I mean, it hasn't been too bad. There's nothing that we can't handle, it just takes a while. I heard that there were some children on the trail this year, and some four-year-olds, and I think people should parent however they want. I think it's great that people as families are going, um, are going, to hike and I'm like I heard one family got off because they got so much criticism for having the four year old hike it but could probably handle it. But personally I wouldn't want to be hiking with a child or even maybe a dog like with the Smokies permit and, or not with the Smokies permits, but with the Smokies uh, prohibition of dogs. Like, it would just be an inconvenience, so. The dogs I've seen, though, they all seem to really enjoy hiking. And I love dogs. I'd like to get a dog that I could be active with like that. Lots of service dogs and, I don't know, lots of people with pretty well-trained dogs. Although I've heard a few horror stories, but I guess that comes with the territory whenever there's dozens of dogs out here, there will be some issues inevitably, right? So, somebody was telling me about, I guess it was Baltimore Jacket Meals Gap was talking about uh, people hiking with cats and how there are a couple people who through hikes like with cats in their packs, I mean, most of them, I'm sure like the cat is not going to be walking all this terrain. So, 
I guess people hike with all different animals. <laughs> I can't imagine it though. But hike your own hike. And if your cat is cooperative enough, you could do that. Wow, you have a very amazing cat. Um, tonight we were talking about getting pizza, but I'm not sure what's available at Fontana Lodge. So the book, the AWOL guide said only only thing available to us is um, like a store that sells hot dogs because the restaurants aren't supposed to open until May 1st, which doesn't make any sense to me because through hikers are going to be coming through and a lot of us are, you know, willing to buy restaurant food. It's not like we're unwilling, but maybe they just find that the hiking crowd doesn't spend as much as like weekenders, I'm not sure, day hikers. Um, this slack packing has really made me want to lighten my pack even more because it's so much easier to move and I feel so much better on my knees and also on my back. Like this pack is not designed for much more than I think 35 pounds, so it's a ULA circuit. And um, I have a lot of weight. I have the extra food weight that I'm carrying makes it probably about 30. And it just makes it way harder for me than today, where like my back feels cooler, my shoulders feel so much better because there's no pressure on my shoulders, and I feel way more comfortable. So I understand why ultralight people like being ultralight. I can't, I'm, tr you know, I don't know. Maybe I should try something like that. Maybe I'll get into it more as I continue on. I mean, when summer comes, I'm planning on lightening my load somehow. Um, getting rid of some of my extra clothes. Like, I haven't been wearing my long johns very much, but they came in handy the other day when it was snowing, so I don't want to get rid of them quite yet, but after the Smokies, I might, maybe in Damascus, so, uh, yeah, I need to, like, figure out how to get rid of a couple pounds. I mean, the jet boil is great, it's really fast, and I like it, I use it probably one to two times a day, I've been eating oatmeal, and I don't think I could eat oatmeal cold. It just doesn't appeal to me. And also, like, since it's er pretty early in spring, the mornings are still pretty cold. So it's nice to have a hot breakfast in the morning and have, like, instant coffee and oatmeal. are both nice. I haven't been using that much fuel, so... And then for dinner, I usually use it, so... But I wonder... I've watched my friends use their alcohol stoves they're so much lighter, and also, a big thing, they take up so much less space in your pack. Um, they're just very easy to place in there because they're tiny. Like the cat food ones, the Coke bottle ones, the beer can ones, they're all so small. So, I guess that's a big advantage with those. And also, denatured alcohol is so cheap. It's much cheaper than um, white gas. But I guess that's, it's kind of like, you can't use it out west, and I'd like to do some hiking out west, I think, in the future. Like, I'm already, you were reading about uh, signs you're a thru-hiker, and one of the signs that you're thru-hiker, you're thru-hiking, is you're making plans for future trails while currently on your trail. And hearing people talk about the trails they've done, um, I have been intrigued and like wanted to check out some of the trails that people are talking about. Like, um, someone was talking about how he did the Arizona Trail and it was super gorgeous. The only thing is you have to uh, bring water, which makes it way heavier, but I'm very intrigued by that. Um, it sounds like something I'd like. So. I guess I'm kind of like thinking about my future traveling while still hiking this. 
Here's a fun thing to think about. I just finished another audiobook. So that's kind of how I've been entertaining myself. And I haven't gotten lost again. This is our first time, thank God. Yesterday, I was noticing that the white blazes weren't very well marked in the section of trail. So I stopped and asked someone, like, have you seen a white blaze? Cause somebody commented on my uh, video where I got lost. Like, if you haven't seen a white blaze in 10 minutes, you should, like, turn around and start looking the other way and make sure that you're still on trail. And so I hadn't seen one in 10 minutes, I didn't think so. Then I asked somebody who was passing, have you seen a white blaze? And he said, yeah, there's one on that tree right there. And it was like a really faded one. So I guess some sections of trail around here aren't very recently marked. They're pretty well marked, like if you pay attention, but this section today has been good. Like lots of it has been good. Um, in the cold, I see why people would want a supported hike more and more. Like last night, I was thinking people who have rides out where they can just meet someone, man, that would be so easy instead of having to call a shuttle or hitchhike in, which, you know, could take a while potentially for hitchhiking. You can just have somebody to um, help you, like, pick you up and drop you off, but, I mean, I don't know. It doesn't seem like it'd be easy to be the one who's doing the supporting, like, some kind of... Like, a lot of these towns are cool to go in as a hiker. Like, we were in Robbinsville last night, which I know is not the biggest hiker town, but it was actually a really nice town if you don't have a car because we stayed at the Microtel. We could just walk to Ingalls across the street, and then right down the... right around the corner, was this place called Blazes Place, which is a, you know, kind of a small town diner kind of place. And so we got some pretty good small town food, which was nice. But, I don't know, spending like all day in some, maybe, maybe it would be really nice, but um, I think it would be the less fun job to be restocking and stuff. But I guess it would be the less physically demanding, so... Uh, and you're supporting your friend or partner or whatever when you're the one doing the support. And not everybody's a hiker, I know. So, I guess that would be nice in that way. Uh, I guess that's about all I have right now. So maybe I'll turn my camera off and go back to my audiobook. But, I will let you know if anything comes up. I feel good, like, my knee was hurting back there at that crossing, that road crossing. So I ended up staying after everybody else had left. We had a little congregation of people who were taking a little break from the trail for a few minutes. But, but now that I'm hiking again, it feels alright. That's a good sign. I realized I didn't pack my ibuprofen in my day pack since I'm slack packing, so I don't have any to take because my friends have already left. They probably have some, but I just am going to tough it up and then take some when I get to Montana and then have the day off so it'll feel better after that. I know that people say that your muscles develop a lot as you're hiking in your legs, but I haven't noticed, like, everyone was talking about how their body had changed a lot and since they had left, and I know I've, like, lost a little weight, maybe, but I haven't noticed any big difference in my muscles, uh, so I don't know what that means. I'm sure eventually I will, and yeah, like, I think that's, like, a point when people start noticing more of a difference, but... That's supposedly when your big appetite kicks in, I think, around Damascus, or maybe around Hot Springs. I mean, I thought I thought my appetite had already kicked in, because I've been so hungry all the time, 
I have just been eating and eating, and I don't understand how people do the... I know people think it's like, they want to hike and continue hiking and not stop, so they just have like granola bars and that's all they eat all day and then they have dinner, but I like my three meals a day when I'm hiking like this, and I also really like to take a break when the weather is beautiful and it's nice out and just air out my feet. Like, I think that's going to get even worse as the summer comes and it gets hotter. And so, I think that people should think about that. But I also need to work on doing lunches faster. Like, I do cold lunch. I always do like a tortilla with peanut butter and honey or string cheese. But, and then some like candy. But, the problem with it is that um, I never want to pack my food bag right at the top. And then I should keep my everything that I need like in the front pocket, but I haven't been doing that yet. So that requires more forethought than I usually have in the mornings when I'm trying to get out of camp and like being the slow poke lagging one, so. I don't know. Uh, it's gonna be some more uphill here, I think. And then the rest downhill, which, as I said, is my toughest one. I haven't really recorded much of a downhill video yet, I don't think, just because I find it harder. <laughs> and I like to have my both my poles for stability. So, yeah. Alright, well, I'll talk to you all later. Bye!